So starting off with, um, what compelled you to write this book? It is a book that needed to be written. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody has so far assessed Modi's performance as Prime Minister. Right. Yeah, or tried to explain mm-hmm. um, why Parivartan and Vikas and the way we hoped it would happen has not happened. Right. That's what I attempted to do. Right. Uh, your book uh, is called Messia Modi, A Great Tale of Expectations. It's, is yeah. it that how it began for you as a great tale of expectations? Uh, it most certainly did. I've, you know, I've been uh, writing a column for 30 years, more than 30 years in the Indian Express. And um, I've never endorsed a prime minister. But I really thought that, I mean, I believed Modi when he talked about, you know, uh, you know, I, I think the most important issue in India is the economy. Right. And I think that uh, that India has every reason to be the richest country in the world and is not rich because of very bad economic policies. That, right. you know, I'm against socialism totally. And this idea of the state running big corporations and the state running mm-hmm. everything that, that there's possible to run mm-hmm. is, in my view, a very bad idea. And, uh, you know, I feel that it, it crushed the uh, naturally enterprising nature of the Indian people. And when Modi said government has no business to be in, uh, in business, mm-hmm. and when he said government, uh, you should withdraw, he, you know, he really spoke a language that I, uh, that I understood. And mm-hmm. I thought this meant what he said. So, you know, I mean, to me, really, I mean, I begin in the prologue by saying that the mm-hmm. messiahs are sought in dark times. It was very dark times. Nothing was working mm-hmm. as it should. I mean, just take a look at India and compare India to, say, to any country in, in Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. And, you you know, you see the difference in, in immediately. And these were countries that were behind us, you know, mm-hmm. in 1947. Mm-hmm. And actually right up to the, the Chinese began to reform India with a shining beacon of hope mm-hmm. in, you know, and now it isn't. So, yes, I did think that he would he would be the Messiah. Right. And and um, you say that the Lieutenant's elite or, um, as uh, our Prime Minister calls them, the Khan market gang, they, yes. were, they have been very biased towards this man. Would you, in hindsight, say that um, where they sort of right? No, they they are uh, remnants mm-hmm. of an old, corrupt, effete elite, right. of which, to tell you the truth, I belong, so I know them very well. Mm-hmm. And basically, their only interest in India was um, that, you know, there were enough servants available, that life mm-hmm. was easy for them, there were, you know, you didn't have to pay huge fortunes to send your children to school, to good schools, etc. Mm-hmm. So they actually created a country that it often happens in socialist, so-called socialist countries, mm-hmm. that there is always an elite, you know. So you have, for instance, the 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 Stalin moved into mm-hmm. the Kremlin, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mao moved into the emperor's palace in in uh, Beijing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our elite remained in this bubble mm-hmm. that is called Latin Delhi, where the streets are cleaner than anywhere else in India, where there are trees lining the streets and big bungalows and gardens. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that that was wrong. I mean, one of the big causes that I've, you know, championed in my column is that mm-hmm. they showed people that the, the people, who, the new elite that's moved in, that that's what's so disappointing, mm-hmm. is that they've taken over the old elite, you know, it's like animal farm, you know, I mean, that yeah. all that we've done is replace yeah. one elite with another, and that is yeah. very disappointing. Right. Um, so, do you still have a hope for this government? Do you, do you, are you still hoping against hope that something will change? Because uh, this is his second time in government, and over six years, well, India has changed drastically, one would say. Um, do you still hope for Modi to, you know, stand true to his words. Well, you see, India, the changes that he has brought, particularly mm-hmm. in his second term, in his first term, 
the disappointment was that he became a socialist and a statist, in my mm-hmm. view, mm-hmm. right? That instead of dismantling this whole machinery of socialism and encouraging free markets mm-hmm. and, you know, I mean, in my view, free market democracy are the two things that make countries successful. Yes. All the all the successful countries in the world are free. I have free market and democracy. Yes. So in his first term, what was disappointing was that you know I mean you even get rid of that retroactive tax mm-hmm. that Which technically allows you to tax people right up to the East India Company. Yes. You know, so he didn't make the changes. I was very dis- economically he didn't make the, the the change in direction that he promised. And uh, in his second term, in these past six months, mm-hmm. the, the perversion that he's bro- brought it could lead India to be broken up once more. Yes. Because, you know, everything that has been done um, has been done almost to sort of tell Muslims that mm-hmm. they better behave or they can't live here. Yes. And that is a very, very bad idea because we're not talking about a small minority. You know, like the six, mm-hmm. yeah. when after Mrs. Gandhi was killed, the six went through a, a, phase, a phase where they were treated like kind of, you know, lepers almost. Huh? Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're only 16 million people. The Muslims are 200 million people, mm-hmm. near close to 200 million people. It's not a, it's not a minority. You know, this, this is a, a big um, uh, mistake that our, you know, political leaders make by saying mm-hmm. the minorities. This is the second largest majority in India. Right. They were able to break up this country once. Mm-hmm. And the ones that stayed here hoped that this would be a better place than living in an Islamic republic. Mm-hmm. And it has been a better place. Yeah. It has been, you know, a liberal democracy whatever its other flaws. Uh, the failures have been economic, mm-hmm. but not social and, you know, even political. There's been failures in the sense that we've been ruled by one family for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Modi was actually a welcome change after that. Right. Yeah? Yeah. But the this, this very hard-line kind of fanatical hatred of the mm-hmm. Muslim community that the that certainly... His ministers have been showing, you know, uh, is mm-hmm. horrifying. I mean, you know, to have a senior minister of finance yeah, do yeah. that, you know, goli maro yeah. salon. I mean, it's it's beyond horror. Yeah, it's, it's appalling. Hmm? It's and that appalling. means that officials are going to decide whether you are Indian or not, and officials mm-hmm. are going to decide whether you're a traitor or not. I mean, I, I I'm not even Muslim. And mm-hmm. I had—I don't think that any official has any right to ask me if I'm Indian. Right. I was going through one of your columns uh, recently, and I think it's uh, for the last column that you had written in the Express. You mentioned this one line that says, uh, "Painting all Muslims with the same brush weakens uh, yeah. India's attempt to fight the real jihadists." Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, and in relation to that, the whole Delhi elections that just unfolded, um, and and we all can agree that it has been the worst. The campaigning has been the worst. That you no, know, you have been in the business for so many years. You have uh, so many years of experience, and you have seen. We are rather young. We have seen. Um, so, how do you think Delhi elections and the whole um, Delhi and the Khan market gang that Mr. Modi talks about and everything plays up in the future? Well, for a start, he should stop talking about the Khan market gang because the Khan market gang is now his lot. Right. We okay. are irrelevant. The old elite is is dead, mm-hmm. right? It's their guys in Khan market. It's their men sitting in Latias, Delhi. Mm-hmm. It's their men who are actually going to flatten. You know, my grandfather was one of the people who built the city of New Delhi. Yeah, one okay. of the five factors. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm actually very, very, uh, you know, shocked at this unknown architect being brought in from Ahmedabad mm-hmm. to actually deface mm-hmm. what was built as the center of district, which is the heart mm-hmm. of Delhi. So, you know, I mean, let's stop talking about this Khan market gang nonsense. They are the Khan market gang now. And, you know, I, I, I really fear 
Mm-hmm. They, they, but they're not, they're not only just rewriting history, but they're, you know, rewriting Delhi. I mean, yes. look what they're doing it, uh, it without any consultation, without any debate. They've decided that there's going to be a new parliament building, which yes. in the diagram looks like, you know, I don't know, like something that should be on mm-hmm. Mars, you know. I mean, why yes. is there no debate about this? You know, the whole point about democracy is mm-hmm. that, that you have some discussion before you make these drastic changes that they're making to the city of Delhi. So let's not have any more nonsense about Khan market gangs. Mm-hmm. They are the Khan market gang now. Right. And um, you have mentioned in your book that he lacks company, he lacks friends. friends. So um, do you think it's the lack of company or consultation that, uh, you know, he has been taking such drastic steps? Also, um, because there is a common notion that the right uh, and large misses um right intellectuals there are no more like there are not enough people like with the likes of Ram Madhav or Sapandal Gupta. Why is that? Yeah, well, you know, I really believe that he is the most isolated prime minister that I have ever seen in Delhi. Yes. And I'm including Indra Gandhi, who actually was very isolated because she just consulted her two secretaries and her son at right. one point during the emergency. But I think that that um, uh, Mr. Modi is making a big mistake mm-hmm. by, uh, you know, by really isolating himself from public opinion. You know, his only contact mm-hmm. is one way, through junkie bus, right? And through yeah. public rallies, etc. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, most prime ministers, even the most brilliant prime ministers, need advisors they need consultation right, right? Yes. and i think that this is a, it's a very very uh, worrying situation that if he consults anyone at all it would be amit shah yes. and both of them are said in the book provincial politicians yeah you know they've risen to uh, modi has every right to be a national leader now because he won the election on his name right but, you know, nobody gave Amit Shah um, that mandate, mm-hmm. you know. So, really, it's, it's very worrying that, um, you know, he's almost been declared as Modi's heir mm-hmm. without having the mandate to be the, the second most powerful mm-hmm. person in India. And actually, he has become the face of the <laughs> We hardly see Mr. Modi. Right, yeah. And um, so, at a risk of sounding please, like... Please a, observe that the, the laws, that the most controversial law mm-hmm. that has caused all this upheaval in, mm-hmm. the, in the country was piloted by Amit Shah. Right. And before he piloted it, he made those speeches that called uh, illegal Muslim immigrants who are the poorest, most mm-hmm. desperate people to come here to look for jobs when, you know, Indians don't have jobs. Yeah. And uh, to call them termites. Yeah. Yeah. And then to make those speeches saying, after this happens, there will be a national register of citizens. I mean, those speeches were almost menacing in their tone. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, he doesn't have the mandate to Mm -hmm. consider, to to do these things. Right. And... And at a risk of sounding like a conspiracy theory, do you think uh, Mr. Shah might have push, pushed aside everyone uh, who have come in the way or who might have been friends with Mr. Modi? No, I, I don't I don't think that. I think that when Arun Jaitley was alive, right. um, Arun Jaitley was, belonged to the old school of the BJP. Right. You know, he was a very refined... Uh, dignified, accessible political leader. Mm-hmm. And he was the face of Modi 1.0. Right. And after he died, um, you know, Amit Shah has taken this job. And um, it's not a very nice face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's actually quite an unpleasant face of, the, of Modi's government. And I really hope that, you know, that Modi will realize after what happened in Delhi just now that mm-hmm. uh, he needs to take back the lead 
The country voted for him, not for Amit Shah. Right. Right. So, what drastic changes would you say that in his circle, in his first term, people who influenced him or earlier and later uh, after, as you mentioned, the demise of Mr. J.P. and others who influence him now, what drastic changes have you seen in Mr. Modi? Uh, I have not met him since he became Prime Minister for the second term. Right. Um, so I really don't know if he's changed personally. Mm-hmm. But you can see the change in the agenda of the government. Right. And in the tone of the of Modi 2.0, you mm-hmm. see a real hostility towards Muslims. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you, ha- you see a real hostility towards dissent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, dissent is is what? fundamental to demand. I'm sorry, that's my dog. Quite, quite, quiet. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, this is not what, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what will help. And, you know, Modi had a very carefully cultivated international image. Right. He was seen as, as you know, India's new hope. Yeah. And I believe that, that the that the tone of that has come after Amit Shah has become the face of the new government mm-hmm. has actually ended up damaging Modi's international image very seriously. Right. But then he did uh, get a resounding uh, audience during oh, the what? Texas event. Sorry. Oh, what? Guys, shut up. Oh. Right. Yeah. He, if he, he did, did get one? He did get an enormous audience at the Texas event. Uh, which, the, which Howdy, the Howdy Modi one where Donald Trump yeah, that was before all these laws came no? before right, all yeah. the changes that right. was everyone hoped that I, I mentioned in the book that I was at, at uh, Madison Square Garden yeah, at that yeah. first event yeah. right uh, you no longer see those I mean did you see the protest on Republic in New York City outside the yeah. yeah it, they, apparently, they were my my son, who is now in exile, yeah. was was there, and he said they had to take it onto Fifth Avenue mm-hmm. because there were so many people, and they were young people who had uh, who had hoped that Modi would bring about, you know, the changes that would make India the country. He promised, actually, in one of his speeches, mm-hmm. I mentioned it in the book, yeah. that yeah. he wanted India to become a country where young people did not need to leave to find jobs. Right. That hasn't happened. So the, I think that, that 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 if there was a howdy modi now, you would find the same kind of uh, response. Right, but somehow um, the NRI they love Modi. They, well, you see, yeah, go on. Yeah, they have been um, there again oh. during the howdy modi event. Or oh. otherwise, if you uh, see NRI, they seem to be highly supportive of Modi. Now, after the law, things have uh, moved a little bit but then uh, more or less they have been fond of this man rather this his image that he has built well you see um, I, I don't blame them for it mm-hmm. huh? until this uh, until the the damage started being done to his image you know you could be proud of him you had a prime minister for 10 years right who was not really an elected prime minister but a selected prime minister yeah. Selected by the president of a political party. Right. Right? And, you know, whatever Dr. Manmohan Singh's uh, uh, good points uh, mm-hmm. in his earlier, you know, avatar as, as finance minister, I was one of his biggest fans. But right. as prime minister, he was a disappointment because he was taking orders mm-hmm. yeah. from the Congress president. So after that, and I think that a lot of Indians living abroad were a little ashamed, you know, Mm -hmm. that this uh, foreign woman, you know, was ordering around the Indian prime minister um, Mm -hmm. and, you know, really calling the shots from behind the throne. So Modi looked very good then and probably still does to a lot of NRI. Right. And um, since you mentioned about your son, Atish, I must raise this question that how do you feel about, do you feel betrayed by the Indian government? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Atish has grown up in India. He came here when he was 
two when I when you know I brought him to India. Okay. He was given a multiple entry visa as long as he was my legal ward. Mm-hmm. When he turned eighteen, um, I went to apply for you know another multiple entry visa or mm-hmm. to ask them what to do, and they said uh, you know take make him a PIO. Mm-hmm. He didn't meet his father till he was twenty two years old. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he had a brief relationship with the father. And the father got killed, yes. right? Yes. And all these, the o, the PIO was automatically changed to uh, OCI or whatever. Yes. And um, this Pakistan thing, you know, Pakistan parentage, etc., mm-hmm. was put in later. You know, when they were doing the OCI, right? Yes. And even within the law, there are exceptions possible, as they made for Adnan Sami. Right. No. Right. No. So um, you know, obviously, it's a vindictive act, and mm. uh, you know, it's awful. It was weaponizing citizenship, and now we notice that this is, mm-hmm. you know, they're weaponizing it on a much bigger scale. Mm-hmm. Do you think? And this comes after his uh, article was published in the Times. Without was question, and as soon as it mm-hmm. appeared. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sambit Patra and other kind of, you know, BJP spokespeople mm-hmm. people said he's Pakistani. Yes. You know perfectly well he isn't Pakistani. Yeah. And, yes. you know, even the Prime Minister said, the writer himself says he had a Pakistani father. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. A Pakistani father who died fighting fanaticism. Right. Yeah. That's true. I mean, these people who they want to rescue from um, uh, from Pakistan now, mm-hmm. people, uh, you know, people with, who are being persecuted for their religion. Uh, Salman Qasir died defending a Christian woman mm-hmm. on throw for blasphemy. Mm-hmm. So you know, I mean, it, 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 it's to be ashamed of, you know, Absolutely. in that Pakistani connection. Absolutely, and. Um... See, today you said that you have not met him since he, his second term, but uh, if today you were granted private audience with him, what advice, if he seeks your advice, what advice would you like to give him? Well, he's unlikely to take my advice, but I would tell him straight away mm-hmm. to change the tone of this government. You know, he's already announced that he, they're not going to have this NRC nonsense. Yeah. But um, he needs to win, he needs to live up to... Sabka Vishwas, he's right. lost it at the moment. Right. Without question, the Muslims don't trust him. As we mm-hmm. can see, the Shaheen Bagh replicas have mm-hmm. popped up all across the country. Yeah. And if I were Muslim, I would be scared. Mm-hmm. There's a menacing tone. Mm-hmm. So I would tell him, first, stop that. Mm-hmm. Right? Secondly, win back the trust, the Vishwas of Kashmir. Yeah. How long is it going to be, you know, under lockdown? And, yeah. you know, is it is a good idea to lock up two chief ministers under, a, a, you know, and under the NSA? Mm-hmm. Three, actually. Farooq yeah. Abdullah is not out either. You know, where is Sabka Vishwas? So I would tell him, you know, please win over Sabka And thirdly, get the economy. Please mm-hmm. move the country in a direction in which private entrepreneurs mm-hmm. will trust the government. Right. And um, talking about the economy, it's been uh, six years low. The GDP fell at uh, 4.5% the rate. And were you, were you impressed by the budget this year? Not at all. Mm-hmm. Not at all. Okay. It was just, uh, you know, I mean, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry at the end of it. Because I, I actually wrote against it. Mm-hmm. You know, that new direction is what people are looking for in the budget, mm-hmm. where you get rid of regulations that are not needed, where you get rid of taxes that are not re- needed, mm-hmm. where you actually create an atmosphere. Do you know, I live in Bombay, mm-hmm. and and uh, I have a lot of <laughs> businessmen. Mm-hmm. Every regulator in this country thinks that he's a little god now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, 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 the harassment that goes on mm-hmm. is just extraordinary. It's not, it wasn't much better under Sonia Gandhi, by the way. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, what we hoped for was a messiah, right, who would change all that. 
Right. So, so you think he has failed the people of this country? I think that so far, uh, the expectations that we had of him have been betrayed. Right. Right. And we still have four more years for this. Are you um, recording all this? I hope you are. Yes, ma'am. I am. Yeah? Okay. Yes, But, you know, I don't want to be misquoted on any of no, this. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Um, we still have four more years of his government this term. So, yeah. um, as you mentioned that those three things that he has to win back the trust, uh, get the economy on the feet and, um, again, tone down the government. What do you, if at all he does take some lessons from what happened in Delhi or what is happening in the country, what do you really hope for in the, in the next four years? And are you still rooting for him? Well, I just said, you know, the, 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 those are the four things I'm hoping for. Mm -hmm. He has to win back Sabka Vishwas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vikas is not going to happen until private industry in India starts in, uh, investing. Mm -hmm. They're not investing yet. Right? Mm -hmm. The big project that that they're dreaming of, the big, you know, trillion, five trillion dollar economy that you hope he'd be able to create. I don't mm -hmm. see any sign of it until private businessmen start to to invest in India. Right, ma'am. But somewhere deep down, are you still rooting for this man to, you know, become... Am I like still rooting for him? Yeah. Well, you know, I um, believe in democracy. He mm -hmm. is the choice of the people of India. Mm -hmm. He has the right to make decisions for the next four years. So I wouldn't say that I'm madly hopeful mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. but I think he has to be given a chance because the people of India have given him a chance. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, only somebody who didn't believe in democracy would say, you know, I reject the mm -hmm. mandate that's been given by mm -hmm. the people of India. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's the end of the question. Okay. Thing.